the camp was conducted here in a little town called Mechanicsburg, Illinois, about um, 20 miles from Springfield, Illinois, and I attended the Bethel camp, was renting a, a facility owned by the Nazarene Church, Nazarene Acres. And uh, the very first night, I was 14 years old, the very first night, an invitation was given. The preacher was from Logansport, Indiana. I was seated, hmm, I'm just trying to think. Is your hair red? No, I wasn't on the front row. I was in, it's, it's got kind of a wretched, what's your name? Okay, Anna? Uh, yeah, I know you. <laughs> the preacher, apparently somebody had told him about me. That I, and this, I'm not saying this is true about Anna, but I was a rough sinner boy. My kids remember an old gospel song, I went there to fight, but oh my, that night, God surely got a hold of me. Man. You probably never heard the song. I thought that somebody had told him all about me because when he preached, he jumped off of the platform. I'm not going to do that. But he pointed right back at me. The moment the opportunity was given for an altar call, I ran to that altar. Did any of you ladies ever carry one of those little thin handkerchiefs and you could read a paper through them? My sister, who is now serving the Lord in the in the area, my other uh, siblings have died, but she invited me to come to camp. And uh, the very first night, I ran to an altar. I want to say it this way, Jesus found me because he came to seek and to save those that are lost. I didn't know anything about God or about church, or about the Bible. But I asked Jesus into my life, into my heart. And I wept bitterly because I was a vile sinner at the age 14. My habits were very ungodly. As I repented and wept at an altar, I was bitterly weeping. And... Uh, I didn't have a handkerchief. At our church now, we keep Kleenex at the altar. But I, my nose was running, tears were flowing, and my sister, who was praying for me, knelt beside me. And she thought she was helping me. She pulled out of her purse one of them little ladies' handkerchiefs that you can read a paper through. It wouldn't hold enough snot for one snort. <laughs> and I went. She gave that to me. And the next thing I knew, somebody said, here's a clean handkerchief. And some gentleman gave me his. And I went and prayed and asked Jesus to forgive me of every sin. I got back to Decatur the following Sunday night. <laughs> Pastor Don Nyer, who had a lot to do in the early days of this facility was my pastor. He said, son, you need to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the next Sunday night, I was saved on Monday, on Sunday night, at our local church, down in the basement in a concrete tank, he baptized me in water in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I began to search and serve God with all of my heart mind, soul, and strength. I rode my bicycle to church in every service. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and then in the area, whenever at a church, a Pentecostal or full gospel church, I, I would go there on the other nights. But it was faithful in my local church. It was in November, two years later. I was in Evansville, Indiana at the Bethel Temple Church, located on Main Street back in that day. And uh, I was 
was there for a Bible conference. Bethel Fall Bible Conference. And uh, this would have been about 1956. And so, I didn't have any place to stay. And so the pastor found a Sunday school room down in the basement of this big old church that had, you won't probably understand this, but a steam heating system. And so I was locked in the church at night and I prayed and I asked God to have his way in my life. Now I heard noises, the pipes cracking and popping, but I was locked in there. And so I prayed and I prayed. During that night, as surely as I'm standing here in front of you, God spoke to my heart. I believe audibly. And he said, son, I'm calling you to preach my gospel. I wept again. And I promised God that I would be faithful to Him the rest of the days of my life and walk in obedience. Uh, went back home. Went back to school. Let it be known to my school. I carried my Bible with me every day on the top of my other books. In study halls, on occasion, I would read my Bible if I had my work done, my school work done. I went to Bible uh, study prayer meetings. In fact, I began leading a local church, gave me the keys to a little community church. And before school, we would meet with a half a dozen to a dozen students. we pray before we go to school. I believe it was 1958 when the, this facility was made available. And I've come every year since 1958 to the senior camp meeting to most of the junior camp meetings. God called me to preach. My pastor got up one day in 1959 and he stated that there was a church that didn't have a pastor. I was married in 1960 to my wife, the most beautiful woman over there in that golf cart, 1960. In 1961, we opened up Hillside Bethel Tabernacle. It was a country church. We didn't have inside toilets. We didn't have enough money to pay for oil for the furnace. And so we, some nights we met at our homes, and Sunday we met at the church. Prior to that, Brother Wendell Nance was in Rock, in Logansport, Indiana. And he said, I want you to come and speak at a youth rally, youth revival. I got on a train in Decatur, Illinois. It was called a milk train. Does anybody know what that would be? Obviously, it stopped at many junctures and picked up milk. A lot of stops. Something else that I thought was quite unusual. I had no experience on a train. But I did notice when you went into the lavatory on the moving train, when you flushed the commode, you could look down and see the railroad ties going by. Not very sanitary, but I'll never forget it. I prayed a lot. I went to Logansport and preached my first youth Revival. The pastor there got me a hat and a top coat because we were going visiting. And he said, I need to look like a preacher. I don't know what a preacher looks like, but I had a hat and a top coat and a suit and a tie. And uh, we went hospital visitation and he led me and then I had a youth revival every night. For that week back to Decatur married my wife began Hillside Bethel Tabernacle Church and Ministries today we conduct a Christian school
preschool through high school. We're involved in a place called Bethel Youth Camp and Conference Center. Now, all of that, and I'm about done, if I can say this reverently and respectfully, maybe God had a plan in my life for a young man that I had met who said he was going to marry my daughter. And I wasn't very happy because his mama had privately talked to me about how ornery her boy was. And he would come to my house or our house and he said to me, if you don't behave, I'm going to marry Lori. Maybe in God's plan, he said to me, I've called you to preach the gospel. We had a tent revival in that town called Dalton City, Illinois. Previously to that, Brother David Cook, if I remember correctly, was preaching a revival at Hillside. Keenan Smith came to the altar and he asked Jesus into his life. Maybe you and I do not know what God is going to use in our lives. I do say today, even though I was very distressed at Keenan, because I love my daughter, he married her, they had children, they left the country to a place called Texas. Maybe, maybe God had a plan and used this little old preacher mentor, do some training. And I remember when he first began to direct this camp meeting many years ago. Now God used him in many wonderful ways. So Pastor Keenan, respectfully, I don't understand why God did it, but I'm excited. Can you say amen? amen. God bless you, Pastor Keenan.